Okay, I want to demonstrate a technique I've developed for producing the effect known as sequencer ratcheting. This is where the trigger rate of the sequence uh, increases uh, without changing the underlying clock speed. So you get a, a sort of repeated note or thrilling effect uh, popularly used by Chris Frank doing the sequencing for Tangerine Dream. I've seen various methods of producing this effect uh, demoed on YouTube and elsewhere and uh, I've been trying to produce a satisfactory version of it myself. I've come up with a pretty reliable technique of doing it. Uh, I'm sure it's not the, uh, the only one. It may not be the, the simplest one but it works for me. Uh, I'm using a dope for MAQ163 sequencer. Uh, as you probably know, this has both control voltage gate uh, and MIDI connections, uh, so you can use a wide range of synthesizers with it. Uh, but this ratcheting technique will only work with a control voltage gate synthesizer because you need to be able to separate out the signals for the control voltage and the gate so that you can in effect uh, inject uh, new gate signals uh, into the control voltage signals uh, without affecting the underlying tempo. So I've set up a, a, a basic and quite familiar 8 note sequence on the top row of the dopefer. So if we just play that, uh, I've got it connected by the way to a sequential circuits flow 1 synthesizer. Let's hear the effect of that. Okay, so as you can see I've got that set up as a, a 16 note sequence. It repeats the, the same pattern twice. Now obviously on the first row the rate of the note gates is exactly the same as the rate of the CV so you don't get any variation in the gate time. But what I've done with the second row is I've altered the prescaling so that it runs at twice the speed of the first row. So let's look at the effect there. And for the third row of the sequencer, I've doubled the clock rate again. So the third row uh, is running at four times the speed of the first row. But because these rows aren't directly connected to the synthesizer, at the moment they're having no effect. But let's look again at the way that the clock rate for the second and third rows uh, increases uh, compared to the speed of the first row. So what we want to be able to do is to inject the uh, gate signals from the second and third row into the sequence without affecting the way the first row works. Uh, now I'll show you next uh, the first way that I developed to do Okay, this is the first method I developed to produce sequence of ratcheting. It's a small switch box I built. There's no active electronics in this. Uh, it's simply a series of sockets and momentary buttons. Uh, the four sockets on top connect to three of the gate output sockets from the dopefer. Uh, the fourth one's a spare for different functions. On the other side we've got a set of four outputs which uh, lead directly from those inputs. There's also a combined output which is what I use to connect to the synthesizer, in this case as I say a sequential circuits pro one. When you have all this connected up, and I'm not going to do this now because I'm going to move straight ahead to the final technique that I used. Uh, switching this switch 
uh, locks channel 1 uh, so that the gate signal passes directly to the synthesizer uh, and it plays with exactly the same effect as we've heard previously. But you can use the other buttons to momentarily switch in the gate, signal, the gate signals from channel 3 and from channel 2 so that you uh, multiply the speed of the gate signal and produce that thrilling effect. The only problem with this, of course, is that A, you have to get the timing precisely right, uh, and B, it's fine for live performance, but uh, it's not much good for uh, a sort of pre-programmed sequence because you have to keep pressing the buttons to create the effect. So I'll move on to the way that I developed to produce the same effect, but automatically. OK, this is the technique I developed to produce the ratcheting effect automatically. It uses a dope for voltage control switch, A150. Uh, and basically uh, I have the trigger signals from the three channels of the sequencer uh, passing into different inputs of the switches. So then I have to organise for the voltage controlled switch to get a voltage signal which switches it uh, at a regular time and for a programmable period to produce the ratcheting effect. OK, so this is how we control the voltage controlled switch to get the ratcheting effect at the, the times we want. Uh, it's a bit of a heavy handed solution. It's a second dope for MAQ163 sequencer. Now I'm sure there's ways to do it using uh, Dopfer's clock dividers, uh, but A, I don't have one, and uh, B, using a second sequencer gives you uh, a great deal more control about what you can actually do with the ratcheting effect. So let's start our first sequence again. That's just a reminder of how the basic sequence sounds. Now what we've done is on the second sequencer, uh, all the voltage control outputs are set to naught, except for where we want to insert a ratcheting effect. And there we set the control voltage so that it's above the level which switches the voltage control switch. I think that's something like 3.5 volts. But obviously you've got full manual control o over the output of the control voltage, so you can experiment with that. So now each time the second sequencer, uh, which is uh, controlled by the clock speed of the first sequencer, obviously, uh, each time it, it reaches a note, that puts out a CV which switches from uh, one input of the voltage control switch to another input. Uh, and the way we've got it wired up, what we're doing is the uh, control voltage from the first sequencer uh, remains constant, that's connected directly to the synthesizer, but the triggers switch according to which uh, state of the voltage control switch is. So let's show the effect of that. I'm going to start the first sequencer and then when I start the second sequencer, you'll hear that each time it comes to a note which is above the trigger voltage, the switch will switch the gates from one to another and you'll get a ratcheting effect. Experimenting with different clock speeds, uh, clock divide rates, note lengths and so on, you can get different effects. 
but the big advantage of this system over any other way I've seen to uh, produce latcheting is that because you can introduce the latcheting effect using any note from the second sequencer uh, it's very easy to vary where the effect comes in so uh, I'll just play it again for a few moments and add some extra effects as we're going along Okay, I hope you found this interesting and useful and that it will encourage you to experiment with some of your own techniques of producing this effect. As I say, I'm sure there's simpler ways to do it, maybe with Dopefer's clock dividers, but uh, this works for me and I'm having a lot of fun using it. Thanks for watching.